right, so we're back with another uh, Demon Slayer episode review. Sorry, I'm a little kind of out of it today, so I apologize if I'm not really like very coherent with what it is that I'm going to be talking about in the video. But uh, I got around to watching the episode just a few minutes ago, and I ended up really enjoying it. I didn't know what was actually even really going to happen, besides obviously kind of like the main thing that you can tell by the title of the episode and what we were going to potentially going to get into based off of what happened in the end of the last episode, and it was getting to know more of the backstory behind Muichiro, and that's exactly what ends up happening in this episode. Uh, obviously, the last time we saw him last week was when he broke out of the uh, water pot prison, and he's trying to save, uh, I forget what his name, Kotetsu? Yeah, I think that's what his name is. He's trying to save Kotetsu, because he's about to like get attacked from some of the, uh, from a uh, Gyokos, I think that's what the demon's name is. Trying to save him from the, the pot demons, basically. Uh, but he's very weak uh, because the there's, there's a lot of paralysis in his body, because I think because of the needles, and then also it was very difficult for him to get out of the prison to begin with anyways. And then we start heading towards the backstory of like what happened to Muichiro before he became a demon slayer. And essentially what ended up happening is that at a very young age of 10 years old, he lived with his father and his mother, and his mother one day got sick, and his father went to go get herbs to turn into medicine, and they both tragically ended up passing away. So it was pretty much left to him and his twin brother, which actually revealed that he actually has a twin brother in the episode. And we basically just end up learning that the both of them try to survive with one another, but they're both constantly kind of at each other's necks because Muichiro is the one who's actually more kind and compassionate towards other people and he gen genuinely wants to help other people. He genuinely wants to help other people, right? That's the main like thing that is like focused on in the episode. And he's also an optimist, right? He's optimistic about a lot of things and he understood why his dad went out to go and find the herbs in the first place him dying like the way that he did was just a tragic accident that just ended up happening the way that he did meanwhile his twin brother who's actually basically exactly how muichiro was before um regaining his memories so basically muichiro before uh, when he had amnesia um uh i forgot i forgot I and mean, already forgotten what his name is uh muichiro's brother i forgot what his name is but yeah he's essentially muichiro if he had amnesia He's very distant, he's very, um, he's very cold towards other people, and he, you kind of get the sense that he kind of hated his parents for, you know, what they did, because his mother was constantly, like, trying to help around and take care of the house and take care of the family, even though she was sick the entire time and she needed the rest to be able to, you know, try to get better but she wouldn't do that she would continue to keep working until eventually one day she ended up fainting and got unconscious and then she ended up eventually you know passing away because of her sickness and he also blamed his father for going out to try to you know look for herbs that may or may not have been able to help in the first place and he ended up dying because of it eventually there's more of a back and forth between both murichiro and his brother and you know, it gets to a stalemate pretty much where they're both very distant from one another because uh, they end up eventually meeting the the master of the Demon Slayer Corps. They end up meeting his wife. And that's because she ends up telling the both of them that they're both descendants from great swordsmen of the past. And they were able to use a breathing technique that no other Demon Slayers are capable of being able to use. So we end up getting, we end up getting an explanation as to why Mujichiro is, is like some sort of like child prodigy. It's because... He basically is, and we figure out more in the episode because a demon ends up uh, uh, breaking it into the home and kills Murichio's brother, and Murichio's basically left to go and fend for himself to uh, to kill the demon, and he does that completely all, like all by himself, even though he doesn't even have like a neutrating sword or anything to be able to actually properly kill the demon, and isn't it until the sun comes up that the demon actually ends up dying. Uh, the kid was a child prodigy, and something sort of like awakened in him like that day when in, when it showed up at his home uh, in the summer, and he just kind of lost it, and all he could see was red, and took it all out on his demon. But I really liked in this episode because like Murichiro, we really get to see who he was 
before like everything happened and then we also get to see uh his relationship with his brother and even though his brother was very cold and very distant and very angry he was angry for a lot of reasons as to like the predicament of what ended up happening in his life but even he was dealing with the trauma of everything was going on in his own way and the only thing that he ever really wanted to end up happening in that moment as he was dying in, in his childhood home was for his brother to be safe because he knew that his brother would eventually end up being someone the cho one of the chosen ones to go and help people and save people and do what needed to be do because his brother was so kind-hearted and compassionate towards other people and that's all he ever wanted and you know it's it's kind of ironic that he says that and because Mudicho ended up losing his memories and losing a part of himself of who he was before and that changed that changed him right that changed him completely and he wasn't like that for a long time and I think now because of this event happening Mudicho is going to end up you know probably end up becoming more of who he was before in the past and he's going to take on a lot of traits of what he used to be back then and I think that could be interesting depending on if we see more of him which may or may not happen depending on how they're going to do future seasons because I imagine they're going to focus more on trying to show off the other Hashira members that's what, like like they really have been doing for the past couple of seasons first it was uh it was kind of like all of them mainly Giyu and and uh and Shinobu in the first season then Uzui and or rather Rengoku in the Mugen Train arc and then Uzui in the Entertainment District arc and then it was uh Mitsuri, uh, yeah, Mitsuri and Murichiro and, and, uh, the Swords with the Village arc. But, uh, I really ended up enjoying it. And something else that also ends up happening, uh, I wish we got to see more of it, but we're obviously gonna see more of it next week, but I really wanted it this week. Uh, Murichiro ends up awakening his Demon Slayer mark. And I did a little bit of research on how it works, so I'm not gonna go into it, but he ends up awakening his mark, uh, again, and from some of the details that I've read about it, uh, he awakened the mark and now he's like got super enhanced abilities. It's basically like the same thing that Tanjiro had in the Entertainment District arc. So he's got like super enhanced abilities and the abilities that he already has are like amplified like tenfold basically. And so he was already really strong as a Hashiro to begin with and he was a like super prodigy. Now he's even more powerful. Now he's definitely in the next episode we're going to see him take down Gyoko and another one of the upper moons is going to end up getting taken down. And then, obviously, we're, after that happens, we're going to go back to Tanjiro and Hantengu, and we're going to see probably Tanjiro take down uh, the other upper moon that's in the Swordsmith Village. And uh, that'll be really cool, right? And uh, that'll be like a huge step for Tanjiro and, and uh, his his journey for gaining strength to take down uh, Muzan Kibutsuchi. So... Yeah, I ended up really enjoying the episode, mainly just because the really thing that we only really got with Murichiro was that he was very cold and stoic and distant towards people. And now we know the reason behind why he is the way that he is. And I think now that we know more about him and now that he's regained his memories, we're going to see a different side of him from here on forward if we ever see more of him after this point. And I think it'll be interesting, right? I really just enjoyed the episode. It, it, it kind of, it tug at the heartstrings, I'm not going to lie. You know, seeing his relationship with his brother and the stuff that his brother was saying, you know. It, like, earlier in the episode, he's, he was talking about how the Mu and Murichiro is, stands for, like, uh, meaningless or worthlessness and stuff like that. And then towards the end, and he's like, that's not what it means at all. It means infinity. And he talked about how... Um, if Murichiro, like, was fighting for other people, he would be able to fight with infinite strength because of how much he wants to strive for protecting other people, and that's what he was meant to do. It was like it was his destiny go to go and help other people, and that all um, his brother was, was, you know, his brother was in the way, basically, and he was stopping him from doing that. And, you know, it was emotional. It was, you know, it took at the heartstrings because it kind of reminded me of, of a lot of in a lot of situations and how i was with my brother and uh yeah anyways i, I really liked the episode i thought it was really good uh we're gonna see more stuff happening next week though and uh, i'm really excited and i want to see it <laughs> like i really want to see it like the season's almost over because i think there's only going to be 12 episodes so 
you know, you know, it is what it is. Anyways, that's pretty much it for me. That's all I have to say. Uh, I really liked it. I want to know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. I'd really appreciate it. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. If you want to see more, please be sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys next one. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'm out. Peace. Yeah!